Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have all about the Sorcerer with a very fun and powerful Dragon Sorcerer build. And in BG3 might surprise you to know Sorcerers are without a doubt the kings of magic. You'll get to excel both at very powerful single target spell damage to machine gun enemies into submission, together of course with very deadly area of effect ones, and the best part, crowd control and difficulty class spells too, with close to 30 DC even, to ensure nothing in the game will resist your spells, even on tactician mode, even against enemies with spell resistance. As a matter of fact, even your simple cantrips can eventually become forces to be reckoned with when you are a sorcerer. So without further ado, let us get into our dragon sorcerer guide. First, with the main mechanics behind the class overall, and of course, the Dragon Sorcerer subclass. First, Sorcerers are unique in that, unlike Wizards, Druids and Clerics, they have a limited number of spells known, that is, the spells they can cast. The number of spell slots they have is mostly the same as other classes, but not the spells they can actually cast, right? You do not get to learn spells from scrolls, or get them all available to you, rather, you have to learn them during level up, and that's it. Now let's get into the subclass, right? And we'll be going with Draconic Bloodline. To me, it's the best overall, especially as far as early power. Wild Magic can be fun, and I'm thinking of making a build for it, but I honestly don't think it's anywhere near as good as it was in Baldur's Gate 2, I'm afraid. And Storm Sorcery, it does have its benefits, but I'd rather Draconic if you're going for damage, at least early. And the main benefits of Dragon Bloodline are, first, you have an increased amount of hit points, right? Plus 1 for each sorcerer level for a total of plus 12, as that's the cap so far. Second, you have pretty much a permanent mage armor effect on your character. So long as you aren't wearing armor, your AC will become 13, just like the spell, and no, they will not stack. You also get to choose your dragon ancestor. This is mostly for what elemental type of damage will be boosted later on. There's a lot of different choices, and we can see what they boost to the side here. To me, fire is the best for both single target and area of effect. There's something to be said about lightning later, but it's way, way later, right? I'd rather fire for earlier and also decent enough late game power. As far as the dragons that have the same element, I mean, we have three for fire. The main difference is the spell you'll gain for free, right? The red dragon is burning hands while the brass is sleep. As you'll be going with a fire dragon, to me the best pick is Brass, because we get Sleep for free. And Sleep is, well, the best very early game crowd control spell. Of course, it's going to get outclassed eventually, but by that point, you'll already have more spells from your normal level up process anyways. This way we don't have to learn Sleep at level 1, because like I said, you have a limited number of spells you can learn. This guy's self for the Gold Dragon is rather useless, you have a mask that can do the same. And as far as red, burning hands, I also wouldn't bother with it. Sleep to me is the way to go. And of course, if you want to go with lightning, for example, fog cloud from bronze is amazing. And by the way, you can change the color of your dragon scales, no matter the dragon bloodline you picked, right? Just go for all draconic colors and customize it any way you see fit. At the second sorcerer level, you gain another special mechanic, sorcery points. You have one for each sorcerer level. And they basically have two uses, the first is to replenish spell slots. This works only up to level 5 spells, and let's say, well, we want an extra level 5 spell slot. We have two by default, so let's use create spell slot. And you'll have to spend sorcery points for each spell slot you want. Starting at two, right? So for a level 1 spell, that's already two sorcery points. Let's create a level 5 slot. And there we go, we now have 3 level 5 slots. Because we have the free cast Elite Power on, we didn't really have to spend any spell slot. It's quite a busted ability to have. Anyways, the second use of your sorcery points is Meta Magic, which you can find here to the right side of the screen, close to the turn base mode icon. You start with 4 of them, but you have to pick 2, and you'll gain more as you level, with new choices becoming available too. Meta magic is part of what makes sorcerers the best at magic, right? Because you can, for example, cast spells twice when it comes to single target, both damage and buffs. Or through the heightened spell later, 
ensure the enemies will fail their saves, both for damage and crowd control. But anyways, we don't have heightened spells so early. Careful is rather useless to me, it just make allies pass their saving throws. I guess if you are going for crowd control spells like Hypnotic Pattern, so you wouldn't worry about friendly fire, but to me proper positioning is a way better way of doing that, right? Then spending points into a precious ability that you don't get many of. Distance spell can help a bit by increasing the range of your spells is not the area of effect, rather just the range. Extend spell will increase the duration of buffs and debuffs. To me it's nowhere as good as it was in Pathfinder and 3rd edition D&D. Because nowadays a lot of spells that have duration, well, they require concentration and won't last for more than one battle usually, even with extend spell. To me the way to go is definitely twinned. So our single target spells, including cantrips, can hit two enemies at the same time. As I said, it's amazing for cantrips, which will be your bread and butter source of damage for quite a lot of the game. As you won't have slots to handle every single enemy battle, unless you are spamming long rest. So to put it simply, you want to win spell, and the other here is up to you. Level 3 you get another meta magic, but the next one will take a long time to get. There's two main choices here, Heighten is my preferred pick, because it forces enemies to save with disadvantage against your spells, which of course highly increases the chances of them working, both for spells that allow a saving throw for less damage like Fireball, and most importantly crowd control spells. Quicken spell is the second best pick here, although you might also want it instead of Heightened, I just prefer Heightened. What it does is, it lets you cast one extra spell as a bonus action, that would otherwise cost main actions like, let's say, two fireballs. Both cost the same amount of sorcery points, three. As I said, you can choose to replace a spell you already have with a new one, so that, for example, you get two new picks whenever you get a new spell level, such as spell level two. Now, your best Dragon Bloodline sorcerer power will come at level six. Whenever you cast a spell that deals elemental damage of your Dragon Bloodline, you get to add your Charisma modifier to damage, which at this point can already be plus 5. In our case, fire, because you went with the fire dragon bloodlines, right? This ability is even better for spells that fire multiple times per round. For example, Scorching Ray, as each individual ray fired will get the plus 5 boost to damage for crazy high amounts later on. But it will also work for, let's say, a fireball, except only once. Second, you also get to add resistance to your character that's 50% less damage taken from your corresponding element, in our case fire. Which is nice because, well, fire tends to be the biggest source of enemy elemental damage. Especially for, you know, explosions and so on. At level 10 you'll get your last metamagic ability. And well, go with either heighten or quicken depending on what you picked before. At level 11 you'll get your last Draconic Sorcerer power, which is permanent flight. So you'll get to fly to whatever position, depending on your movement, at will. Flight, of course, is one of the best movement types in the game because of how easy it is to avoid choke points, obstacles, also to just fly to different elevations to avoid enemy melee attacks and so on. It's just that at this point, any character could also get permanent flight from the Illithid power, but you know, if you don't want to grow face tentacles, it can still help to have this permanently from your Dragon Sorcerer. And now that we know how all the Sorcerer and Dragon Sorcerer mechanics work, let's finally get into our build, first with character creation. My preferred pick here is Human, just like with my Wizard Necromancer build, because we get shield proficiency for free, and there is a certain shield in the game, that lets you get plus one to your spell DC, that you can't really get anywhere else. It's not really necessary, however, because look, first it's only at the end of Act 2, and second, by that point you have so many other boosts to spell difficulty class anyways, it's just if you really want to main max. Feel free to go with anything else, it's not going to be that much of an issue. Although having shield proficiency for free early on can also increase your armor class, especially because our Dragon Sorcerer already has higher AC by default from the Special Mage armor, as an innate ability. And trust me, at least on Tactician, enemies love to target your backline. Anyways, other nice picks are Elf, especially Wood Elf for higher movement, Githyanki also has some very nice abilities, 
especially teleport for free, so you don't have to waste a spell slot using it. And halflings of course, so you don't miss on once, which is extremely annoying and trust me it's gonna happen a lot, because of how many rolls you're making when you fight all the enemies in the game. But anyways, she meets human. When it comes to cantrips and spells, please remember as always that I already have a best spells guide where I cover each choice here in depth that you can check to the side. Firebolt will be your main source of damage as a cantrip and trust me, as a fire dragon bloodline sorcerer, together with some gear boosts, you can really turn this into quite the powerful damage spell. And not for just single target, as we can hit even two per cast with our twinned metamagic feat. Besides that, Blade Ward as always, just for some extra defenses against ranged blows, ideally you want to prep buff with this before battle. And the other ones are up to you, I enjoy light, together with Ray of Frost. The main reason is, well, some enemies are resistant or immune to fire damage, usually the same enemies will be weak to cold, so you can use this as a backup. Plus, if you make enemies sweat, for example from the Conjure Water spell, Clerics and Druids get even at level 1, you inflict double damage with Ray of Frost. Magic Missile can be helpful, right? There's some gear that further boosts it, even if it's not fire damage. And well, at the very least it's always guaranteed damage, but I would rather the area of effect spells early on like Sleep, which we get for free from our Dragon Bloodline anyways. Besides that, the choice is up to you. I enjoy Chromatic Orb because it can be quite versatile when it comes to inflicting elemental damage and leaving elemental surfaces too, together with Fog Cloud to blind enemies without a saving throw. And for the Dragon Bloodline, press of course, as explained before. Now let's cover our stats. Well, it's the classic pick for spellcasters. Charisma is our most important one for spell DC. You want 17 at character creation as the main character, so that at level 4, combined with the Hex gift, it will become 20, the maximum from leveling. The second most important stat is Dexterity, and you want 16, especially for initiative, the faster you can act before enemies can react, well the easier it is to crowd control or blast them into submission, especially considering you can later have up to 3 spells per round. Besides that, just a classic 14 constitution to be safe hit points wise, but I'd also go for 15, if you've watched some of my other guys and you already know why, so we can get a resilient feat later on, and this will become a 16. Strength is dumpable, the same for Wisdom and Intelligence, and that's it. For skills, because we have such high charisma, definitely the dialogue skills, right? So Deception and Intimidation. This way, you can be the main face of your party with very high chances of making all dialogue checks. And I'd also add Persuasion so we can have all of them. And then Arcana, as it's involved in quite a lot of checks in the game, of course when dealing with spells and spell stuff. Even if you have low intelligence, very early you can already get a headband that sets your int to 17 anyways for skill check purposes. Your background should always be used as a way to complement the skills you already have and the skills you want. We already got all the dialogue ones plus arcana, so now it's up to you. For example, Urching gives both sleight of hand and stealth and we do have decent dexterity. Sleight of hand can help disarm traps and unlock chests without needing a sterion. It's up to you, really. For the second level, well, you can get shield if you want, which can help you avoid some hits, it's just that you won't have that many spell slots for it early on. I just go for Chromatic Orb because of how versatile it can be. We also get our first metamagic abilities as I've explained before, and we absolutely want Twin Spell for dual cantrips or dual buff, even let's say dual Chromatic Orbs, which can be very fun, together with Distance Spell. Or Extended Spell if you want, let's say, Higher Hypnotic Pattern Duration is just as slow, my favorite concentration, Crowd Control Effect, already lasts 10 turns. For level 3 and our first level 2 spell, definitely Cloud of Daggers, because it's the most efficient one I believe when it comes to area of effect damage so early. Just remember you cannot move the cloud after you cast it. For the third meta magic ability, you have two choices, Heighten is my preferred pick because it's amazing for both ensuring your spells deal full damage and your crowd controls hit the enemy. Or Quickened if you want to cast 2 spells per turn, so early. It's just that to me Heighten is more efficient. For level 4, any cantrip you want, together with Shield because at this point, well, we have a lot more spell slots. 
And as far as your first feat, of course, we want an ability score improvement instead to maximize our charisma to 20 right at this level or level 5 from the Hag's Gift, which is gained from a quest at Act 1. As I often get the question. Level 5 means level 3 spells, and we have a lot of useful ones here that are going to depend on what you want to further specialize in. Since we have less as a sorcerer, you kind of have to choose well. My preferred pick is of course slow, to me it's the most fun crowd control. Because unlike Hypnotic Pattern, there's really no way for the enemies to remove the effect afterwards. But you know, you can also go with Hypnotic if you prefer, because at least it prevents enemies from doing anything. Until they take damage, that is. Has friendly fire, however, and less useful targeting as low. Haste is amazing on a sorcerer because through the twin metamagic feat you can apply it on two characters at once. And well, two characters with a bonus action, depending on how powerful they are, including yourself or more spells, it can be really good. Just remember, as a concentration effect, it will clash with both slow and hypnotic pattern. It's just the way it is in Baldur's Gate 3 and 5th edition DD. To me, it's slow and I would then choose to replace a spell. You can lose anything else you want here, including let's say Fall Cloud, it's not going to matter that much anymore, when we can just cast Slow or Hypnotic Pattern. Cloud of Dagger 2 if you prefer. As to add Counter Spell, or another one of these spells I mentioned, including Fireball, after all we are a Fire Team Sorcerer. It's just that to me, Slow is more efficient, right? <laughs> Unless you're casting Double or Triple Fireballs per turn, you won't really get to one-shot a lot of enemies on Tactician. Slow, on the other hand, is extremely crippling. Anyways, with Counter Spell we get to avoid enemy spell effects. Level 6 means extra fire damage, which is great, which is also why at this point is when I would consider picking, let's say, Fireball, and we want another spell, so lose, let's say Chromatic Orb, or Call of Daggers, even Magic Missile, depending on what you want, and go for Scorching Ray. The main reason I delay it until now is because, well, now is when we get a fire boost to spell damage, right? And, and the way it works is, because Scorching Ray fires multiple rays, the plus 5 we have to damage now will be applied individually to each ray. Since you get more rays by upcasting the spell, well, let's just say eventually it will become quite a powerful flaming machine gun. Trust me, the damage really gets absurd. Easily enough to one-shot enemies, especially when you make them vulnerable to fire damage from the perilous stake Mind Flayer power. To the point where I dare say it becomes one of the best single target damage spells in the game. Kinda like Hellfire Ray from Pathfinder. Well, more like a bargain being Hellfire Ray, if you know what I mean. As for level 7, I'd go with Wall of Fire for our first level 4 spell. We do get bonus damage to it, of course, so it's quite thematic. Plus, by itself, it's a pretty nice spell, because the wall, well, you can shape it almost any way you want, so it can be quite long. It does offer a saving throw, but even if the enemy is not stuck inside the wall, if they are nearby, they will still take some minor fire damage, right? The big damage, however, comes only if they're inside. At level 8, grab any other spell you want. Even something like False Life can be useful at this point in the game, because of its scaling effects. And for our feat, because we already have the maximum charisma with the Hag's Gift, I'd go for Spell Sniper for once. Why? Well, this will increase your chances of getting critical hits when attacking with a spell, which is great for both your Fire Bolt Cantrip and also the Scorching Ray spell, which can critical individually per ray fired. And like I said before, at this point, both spells, even your Measly Cantrip, are quite powerful and capable of high damage. You also gain another cantrip, honestly just pick anything you want, you might as well go with Eldritch Blast, because if anything, it's unique, right? You can't get it otherwise as a sorcerer. But you'll just be spamming Fire Bolt, most likely, unless the enemy is somehow immune to fire. For level 9 we have our first level 5 spells at last. I find them to be rather disappointing compared to upcast version of lesser spells you already have. There's something to be said about Telekinesis, but you can just get it from gloves. Cone of Cold can deal some nice damage if you make enemies wet first, just like with Ray of Frost, as I've explained in the beginning. Just use, let's say, Conjure Water, and also any other spell you want. For our last metamagic ability, definitely quicken spells, so we can cast two spells at the same round. 
at level 11 we can finally fly for free, and we get, at long last, our ultimate level 6 spells. To me, Chain Lightning is by far the best pick. As I've explained many times before, if you make enemies wet, they'll take absolutely massive damage from this. Easily 100. And the fact it can hit multiple enemies at once, and even be, amusingly enough, twinned, right? For multiple hits, it's just amazing. And you can of course pick another level 6 spell of choice, like let's say Global of Invulnerability, for a very nice area of effect that grants immunity to all damage. For level 12, you can pick any other spell you want. Disintegrate can be fun too when twinned, right, for two targets hit at once, but I'd rather just chain lightning at this point, or you know, Scorching Ray boosted to the max. As far as our last feat, you have a few different choices, right? I just go for Resilient. We pick this rather late with this build, because what can I say, Spell Sniper is quite handy to have. And Constitution, right, which is why we went with 15. This will grant you proficiency in Constitution saves, which helps avoiding, well, Concentration Failure, so your spells don't get disrupted. Of course, you get this rather late, and before that, as a wizard you can just, let's say, drop a crowd control effect like Slow, and use the Misty Step spell to teleport away. The same isn't really true for, let's say, a Cleric, which is why I prefer to get Resilient or Warcaster way earlier with them. And that's it. Alright, now let's discover gear for our Dragon Bloodline Sorcerer. For the helmet, ultimately we have two choices. Birthright is quite unique in that, well first it's a cool looking wizard hat. Second, it increases your charisma by plus 2 for a maximum of 22. It does increase your DC of course, but also has synergy with abilities that enhance cantrip damage based on your charisma. And we have two sources of that as I'll soon show you. Otherwise, just go for the Hood of the Weave for plus 2 to spell DC and attack rolls. It's double the benefit of Birthright, right? Without the cantrip boosting property because they work only based on charisma. Both are found at Act 3 anyways. But for the early game, Act 1 especially, Fistbreaker Helm as always for plus 1 to spell DC and initiative. And for this character in particular, you can also use the Warped Headband of Intellect from the Ogres at the Blight Village to set your int to 17, just to make arcana skill checks, right? During battle you'd much rather Fistbreaker for the DC increase. Cloaks, honestly, just a cloak of the weave as usual for a further plus 1 to DC. There aren't that many good cloaks early on in the game, I think, amusingly enough. Now for robes you have two choices. The potent robe is here if you want the highest cantrip, so firebolt damage. It's one of the reasons I say birthright has its uses. What this does is, your cantrips will do additional damage equal to your charisma modifier, right? So plus 6 with the birthright helmet instead of just plus 5. Second, you get plus 1 to AC, and whenever your turn comes, you automatically get a bonus to temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier, so it's plus 6 every round. Rather fun too. I'm pretty sure these robes come from the Alfira Tifling quest, right? The purple Tifling, who's a bard. Ideally, you don't want to kill her on Act 1, but you can get them during Act 2. Besides that, as a human we have light armor proficiency, so we can go with either the armor of Landfall, for plus 1 to spell save DC, although it won't matter much armor class-wise, or the Robe of the Weave, it's the same benefit, except it has even higher AC than the Potent Robe. Earlier you have the Proctacty Sparks Wall, also for plus 1 spell DC. For Gloves, ultimately Hell Dusk, once again more spell DC, but it also lets you cast Ray of Fire once per short rest. And well, we are all about fire damage, right? This is similar to Scorching Ray, except with higher damage. And we'll get further boosts from our abilities that increase fire. This is Act 3 only, but for Act 1 and 2, I would just settle for the Gloves of Missile Snaring to highly reduce ranged incoming damage after all. That's the biggest danger when playing a Frail Caster. We aren't exactly Frail though because of our Bloodline boost to hit points and armor class, but you know how it is. Boots I don't think matter much for this type of character. I just have the Sweeris issues here for increased jumping distance. <laughs> Go with anything you want, really, like boots that increase movement and so on. The best ones are medium armor, unfortunately. For necklace, you have two choices. Early, the necklace of elemental augmentation, because once again, 
it will add your Charisma modifier to Cantrip damage dealt. And it does stack with the Potent Robes for plus 10 to our Firebolt damage, quite handy. Otherwise, if you want maximum spell DC, for Act 3 you have the Amulet of the Devout for plus 2. Don't forget the spell Crux Amulet, right, to recharge any spell of choice, but you don't need it equipped. Ideally level 6 spells. And the Pearl of Power Amulet for a recharge up to a level 3 spell, ideally slow, haste, fireball and so on. For rings, as usual, the Ring of Mental Inhibition, to debuff enemies' mental stats when they fail a safe against one of our spells, including damage spells like Fireball. The other ring is up to you, I like Shapeshifter's Boom, but there's also the Crypt Lord Ring, right, if you want the Mummy Summon, which can help because Sorcerers lack Summon abilities, unlike Wizards. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a ring that's meant to increase your fire damage by plus one, it's just that I wasn't able to find it on my run, so... If you know where it is now, on the full release of the game, feel free to give me a call. When it comes to staffs, of course the legendary Marco Hashkir staff is the best pick here, especially for a Fire Blaster caster. It not only increases your spell DC by 1, also lets you cast any spell for free once per long rest, ideally level 6 spell. But most importantly, the unique Karaska's Favor ability lets you choose one type of element, ideally Flames of Wrath to boost our fire damage, equal to your proficiency bonus, which works wonderfully well with any spell, but especially spells that fire multiple times like Scorching Ray, of course. And our Cantrip. Because the legendary staff is Act 3 only very early in the game during Act 1, you absolutely want the spell Sparkler instead, to further increase your Firebolt cantrip damage due to the Lightning Charges mechanics, even your attack rolls with Firebolt too. And from Act 2 onwards, there's plenty of other staffs that increase your spell DC, such as Melv's first staff, you can even rush for it during Act 1 I believe in the Underdark, but it can be a bit dangerous, right? For shields, definitely Catheric Shield ultimately, it is the special shield that increases your spell and attack rolls DC by plus 1. Earlier, if you went with human, just go with any other shield, right? They're just here for AC, and let's say a plus one to saving throws from the safeguard shield, also available at Act 1. For ranged weapons, I'd say you have two choices. Dark Fire Shortbow, it has haste for free, together with 50% damage taken from both fire and cold, or... Later, during Act 2, the Hellfire Hand Crossbow. Not to attack really, but just like the Helldust Gloves, it has a similar ability to Scorching Ray. For more free casts of it and higher single target fire damage, of course. Last but not least, we have the very unique and powerful Rhapsody Dagger. It comes from Asterion's last quest during Act 3 and has quite the OP effect. You'll get a plus 1 bonus to attack damage and spell DC for every enemy you slay up to plus 3. It's not that... It's hard to kill enemies at Chapter 3 when you can get this, especially with our Blaster Sorcerer build. But something cheesy you can do is just have someone like Gale summon a familiar with 1 hit points, then you slay them, you'll get the bonus anyways, and repeat. The best part is this dagger bonuses will work even if you want to equip it and trade it for another weapon, like the DC boosting quarter staffs, right? Well, alright friends, so this was it from my Dragon, Sorcerer, Build and Guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and consider becoming a channel member too if you can. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.